this is watercolor paper stretched over a canvas frame. Achieving this is actually quite simple, so let me show you how. You're gonna need a large sheet or roll of watercolor paper that's 100% cotton, a frame. This is actually an old fluid painting frame that I cut the painting off of, and now I can reuse it for this. A staple gun and some water, plus something to contain the water. Start by placing your frame down on your piece of paper. You're gonna to wanna to cut around it so that you have about three, two to three inches around all the sides so that you're gonna be able to comfortably wrap it around and actually staple it down. You want something large enough to where you can fully submerge your paper. It doesn't need to be too thick since it's just paper. A bathtub works great for this. I'm gonna use this really large baking tray. Place your watercolor paper in the water. Once it's fully submerged, you wanna let it really soak in so it can become a little more pliable and we can actually stretch it around the canvas probably about five minutes or so. Once it's soaked, you wanna put the side that you're going to ultimately wanna paint on face down because that's going to be the outside of our canvas. So for me, I need to flip this over just like this. Grab your canvas frame and uh, if you have a brand new one that doesn't have any staples on the back, for me, it's easy to see which side is the back side because it, this has been previously used. But if you've got a brand new one, you're gonna kind of look, there's usually these kind of rounded parts that will actually kind of put ten more tension that's softer on the edges of the canvas and things like that and make it float just above the inside of the frame. And that's the side that you wanna put face down so that when we do put tension on this, it's going to actually kind of stretch it across and it won't rest on the frame. If you've ever changed a tire, you know you go in kind of a star pattern when removing the lug nuts so that you don't get it off kilter and it doesn't put more pressure on certain parts and ultimately make it more difficult. We kind of wanna use a similar thing here, at least at the beginning. We want to staple in one from each side first so that we can get tension and then we're gonna kind of move back and forth between all of those so that we're not getting one side way more tense and then it's not as tense on the other side. Start by folding it over. I'm gonna go in the center here. Take your staple gun, rest it. Make sure you're not going over another staple. Push and squeeze. First one in. Now I'm gonna flip it around and do it on the opposite side. Now on these other sides. When you get to the opposite side, you do kind of want to tug just a little bit to make sure that there is some tension on this. Then we just want to kind of fill in those gaps. Again, we want to kind of alternate. If you've got one that's being stubborn and won't go in, I usually give it one other try, um, just in case I wasn't holding it right. But sometimes the wood is harder in certain parts, so you might need to slightly modify where you're placing this. So let's just go over a little bit more. And there. I'm gonna get about three on either side for this size of the canvas. You might need to put in more and it would be better to kind of put these about two inches apart if you're working on a larger canvas to make sure that there's even pressure. Now the trickiest bit comes when you need to actually do these corners. There's a couple different ways to do this. My preferred method, which is just kind of the easiest and requires the least amount of messing, is to fold it over like this and then I will fold it back to make kind of this little flute here. Sometimes you gotta kind of mess with it to make sure that it's actually going to crease nicely over the edges. And then just staple that down. If you're struggling to get these in and it's in a spot that's crucial, so we can't really move. I mean, I might be able to get this in better here, but let's say hypothetically, this is where that wood is super tough and it's gonna be hard for us to reposition and we absolutely, this is a critical staple that we need. You can always grab a hammer. While doing this, I did make two crucial mistakes that you're gonna to want to try to avoid as best you can. One is that uh, I did rip I did rip this corner and it's because it got too dry and it was not as pliable 
And so I should have been kind of re-misting it as I was going. This took me a lot longer to do than it normally does because I was kind of setting up the camera angles and things like that. And so it was obviously drying. The second is that you need to actually confirm that your work surface is nice and clean, that you're gonna be placing your paper on. I thought mine was clean, but I didn't double check. And I did have two little spots of watercolor that are now stained on this as kind of its little canvas. It's gonna feel kind of floppy and delicate at first, but don't be too skeptical. Just wait a few hours or overnight, and then you're going to be able to play it like a drum. Nice and sturdy, and it does not feel delicate at all. It makes a beautifully stretched piece to actually work on, and it will, obviously, the more water you add, kind of start to pull on itself, but then again, when it dries, it's going to be completely flat and nice and tight. Let me know in the comments what you plan to paint on your stretched canvas, and if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope that you have a magically creative day. I'll play you out.